Okay, so here we are with this 2020 Mercedes-Benz SL550. Uh, this is a really, really nice specification with the uh, selenite gray Magno paintwork. So it's the matte finish against the exclusive Designo light Napa leather interior. I just think it looks absolutely the business with AMG line wheels as well. And, uh, you know, th these are really, really, I just love the SL. Uh, you know, it's, I really, I'm not a huge fan of the the newest generation i think this which was uh, i think 2012 to 2020 uh, really just hit the nail on the head and obviously the with the facelift and the refresh in 2017 i think it just gave it the right the right amount of uh modern touches when we see the interior uh actually i'll just i'll hop inside real quick um you'll see you know it's a little bit outdated for, uh with respect to it doesn't have the screens that you're seeing in uh, in the modern mercedes but whether or not that's a bad thing, I don't actually know. I think that could probably be looked at in you know, one way or the other. So under the hood is the 4.7 liter bi-turbo V8. It's about almost 450 horsepower, and that goes straight to the rear wheels. It's rear wheel drive only. So very nice under here, and it is quite a bit of oomph, actually. <laughs> and in the back as well, so obviously it is a hard top convertible, but there's actually quite a lot of trunk space back here. You have the automatic tailgate, and then you could fit a, a full-size suitcase in there, uh, or two carry-ons, and then this does come down uh, to sort of set your height limit because that uh, the top actually reclines onto that portion right there. But you know, a lot of space, and then you know even more space underneath. So tire repair kit, tool kit, uh, and you could put all sorts of goodies down there. You could really just take this out going on a grocery trip around, and that's that's a full load of groceries right there for a party of two. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and take it out for a spin. I'm going to keep the top down, or excuse me, the top up for the uh, ride. I will post another video of it functioning. Um, but I just figure for the wind, the microphone, I don't want to mess that up. So, like I said, inside we have this nice Designo exclusive leather interior. So it just feels, you know, this is a great place to be. Um, and I always love on these cars because it does still have a regular key, but it also has the push button. But, you know, I personally like to turn a key, so it gives you the option. And then, of course, for the Australian market, those are delivered upside down. But we're in North America today, so we'll put it back in upright. And anyways, cup holders, uh, I'll, I'll do the uh, obnoxious water bottle test of truth. I don't know if that's going to pass, right? These are pretty small. It's nice, though, this divider comes out, and you can put other things in there. Um, but Mercedes, their team of engineers are thinking men. So all the way back here, there is a large cup holder for the obnoxious water bottle of truth. I mean, how often do you see that in a convertible sports coupe? <laughs> you really just don't. So I'll put the key in here for now and just start it up. Yeah, that's nice. That is very nice. These are your convertible controls and then in here you have a little spot for a phone two usb ports plenty of storage plenty of space behind the seats as well door pockets it's actually you know not a not, not that unusable of a sports car really it's if anything it's the opposite um you do have uh, so this has quite a bit of quite a few options we have the analog clock up there uh, this has uh, distronic and adaptive cruise and all of that and also my favorite part you have the panoramic Vario glass roof. So with just one press of a button there, it's the electrochromic glass. Sort of like if uh, you've ever been in a 787, like the windows, uh, rather than a sunshade. It's the same sort of thing, but this is much better in my opinion. It's a pretty immediate shift. So let's just go for a spin. The seats are very nice. These are massage seats and they have the uh, the adaptive bolsters. So when you're taking a corner, no matter what mode you're in, you're in comfort, sport plus, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you take a corner or really just are turning the wheel hard, the opposite bolster actually inflates and it sort of helps keep you snugly inside the wheel. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool touch. And this example only has 10,000 miles on it. So like I mentioned, it's a 2020. That was the last of the previous gen SLs. 
and uh, only been driven at 2,500 miles a year since. So this is a, a nice example. No accident history, clean Carfax, no paintwork. Now we're just in comfort mode right now, but you can already tell I mean, that's about that's a very light throttle application but uh, it, you know this this is actually a very sporty drive it's you know it's it's luxurious it's it's comfortable it, it's cushy but um, it, it kind of wants to kind of wants to play I figure we'll hop on the sawmill real quick on the parkway I will go down to my dynamic select I'm going to sport plus. If uh, power is sent to the rear wheels through the 9G Tronic Plus transmission, so the 9-speed automatic, makes for very smooth driving. Not the sportiest transmission, but when you go in Sport Plus mode, uh, it uh, changes the throttle mapping, it adds a little bit of rev hang, but really it just makes the shifts a little, a little snappier. And overall, it's just a nice response. We're on pretty cold tires right now, obviously, so. We're not gonna go crazy. There you go, up to cruising speed. You know, some cars, you get really gotta plan your lane changes. Uh, this is not one of them. You can, you can sort of just go whenever you want to. And that's kind of the magic of the modern Mercedes bi-turbo. It's actually quite a linear power delivery uh, in low revs. And obviously once you get up past 4,500 revs, you are cooking, but it is pretty good. So I'll go back into comfortable comfort mode right now, just to soften up the suspension a little bit. Obviously, we are in Westchester County, New York, on Sawmill. That is, uh, this is not a very smooth road. So I'll go ahead and I'll set the cruise control. Distronic adaptive cruise control is super, super good. That's not, not a very, that's a pretty lackluster description of it, but if you used adaptive cruise, you know, some like GM adaptive cruise, for example, uh, it, it's, it's a little, the, the follow assist is not great. It's a little, a little choppy, some hard braking, but this is a very smooth and, and I think well-defined system. This. So we're going to go back into Sport Plus. This is a smooth section right here, getting up to speed. Go into manual mode. And we'll behave. You know, obviously this is not the most racetrack ready sports car. And neither should it be. I think if you're between this and say a 991 Turbo, for example, or even you know just a well-specced GTS perhaps, and you want something that you can really daily drive, the Porsche is gonna it's gonna feel more like a sports car. But this is just way more comfortable, and there's there's really no comparison. You know, the steering response, it's actually, it's fairly heavy, but it's very precise. You know, considering what this car is, it's, it's actually really, really good. I'm gonna go into eco mode now. 
so that changes the throttle mapping quite a bit. Now I have to depress the throttle a lot more to accelerate. I'll go back into comfort. So that is going to conclude this driving video and a quick walk around of this 2020 SL550. If you have any questions at all, anything you'd like to see up close on the car, uh, or you know, like I, if you'd like to see the car in person, if you're local, uh, either leave a comment in the auction or you can contact us directly, either at sales at hkmotorcars.com or through the contact seller tab on the Bring a Trailer listing. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, but until next time, Thank you very much for watching. Best of luck.